Howdy, y'all. What's up? What's up, y'all? So tonight, we're going to do a quick little video um, about um, what we're going to sing another song. Can't help but sing another song. Chris Isaac, um, Wicked Game. I'm going to try to not be so nervous about it. Um, so Michelle's critique on my videos is that I need to not tell you guys that I'm going to stop the video <laughs> and then keep the video going. Um, so we will attempt to not do that. Um, um, as far as some other critiques that I've gotten so far uh, from Lori, I got that. Um, let's see. Oh, we need sound with the music, which I agree. But in an effort to kind of keep it pure, um, <laughs> I think a little acapella kind of shows the real true, like, if you suck or not. And look, guys, I know I'm not freaking great, but it's like one in the morning. <clears throat> I self-medicated a little bit ago. And... <laughs> We'll leave it at that. And um, I'm trying to sing. You know, I smoked for 20 some odd years, but singing was something that I absolutely loved doing. Um, just some background there. Um, when I was in like, hmm, second, fourth grade, fourth grade, sorry, went off there for a second. Fourth grade, I um, somebody came into a classroom in the school and was like, Hey, does anybody want to, um, you know, try out for the boys choir, the Texas boys choir? And I'm like, sure. You know, I like singing with my mom, blah, blah, blah. Mom said I was pretty good. So anyways, I'm like, I'll give it a try. So I sang it. Um, I was accepted and, um, we ended up singing the most famous person I ever remember singing and seeing didn't know who it was at the time, uh, was uh, Ronald Reagan. So um, pretty exciting, cool stuff there. But um, anyways, yeah, Texas Boys Choir. And um, then, you know, I always liked choir, always sang. And then in high school, my uh, senior music teacher, oh my goodness, I just forgot her name. Oh, Mrs. Oswald. She was freaking great, too. She was awesome. And there was another teacher I had in high school, Mrs. Krauth, I want to say, or Kraus or something like that. She was very uh, encouraging as far as, you know, trying to get me to um, get up on stage, you know. It's really hard, guys, to get in front of people, to build up the courage to get in front of people, um, especially to do it in front of a live audience, especially to do it in a high school full of people that you don't like and they don't really like you. Um, I mean, look, there was people that I liked and they liked me, but you know, your guy friends and not so guy friends are like, what the heck? So sorry to always continue to be like Marco Rubio and constantly take my drinks of water. But like my son, Evan, uh, I like water <laughs> and I drink a lot of it. It's good for you anyways. Um, you know. And in an effort to just try to keep my whistle wet. Um, that's, you know, what we got going on there. So, any, any who. Um, so, um, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, so, anyways, in high school, my music teacher and my entire music class that I was in class with came up behind me. I was singing some sort of um, Guns N' Roses song. Don't remember what it was. It might have been Don't Cry or something like that. It was something really high pitched. And I like had headphones on and I'm just upstairs singing. And I and I like just stopped singing and I turn around and like the entire class is looking at me. And my teacher's like, Um, you didn't tell me you could sing. So she brings me downstairs. She puts me in front of the piano, in front of the whole class, and she's like, hit this note. Dong on the piano. And I'm like hitting all of these notes. And I went up and down the range of the piano, like all the way, because <laughs> I used to have an extremely high range, like Justin Bieber, I admire Justin Timberlake, I admire like those guys, even Michael Jackson, 
I really admired. Like those were guys, Prince, those were people that I really, uh, you know, dug. And then later on in life, I began to know like people like The Cure, um, you know, uh, U2, one of my all time favorites. Uh, currently, one of my all time favorites is Imagine Dragons, um, Coldplay. So, tons and tons of influence there. ACDC, Def Leppard, I mean, Randy Travis, <laughs> Travis Tritt, Vince Gill. Oh, God, go, go listen to some Vince Gill. I might just sing him one of these nights. But tonight, we're singing Chris Isaac, Wicked Game. This might show a little bit of my high range. I don't know if I can pull it off. You know, I'm going to try. Nerves is a big thing. You know, I just got to keep the nerve level down. Um, so um, that's the effort to try to do there. Um, now, so anyways, to finish the story in high school. So <laughs> in high school, I ended up like um, the teacher was like, oh, we're going to do this concert. And it was this whole big band uh, uh, concert, which was like 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, all the way up into 90s, which the last song we did was Run DMC. Um, so, and I'm trying, oh, American Bandstand, and I was Casey Kasem, imagine that. <laughs> um, but I also sang 16 Candles, Only You, I sang some Elton John song, Dinosaur Rock, I sang some Elvis, um, which definitely I can pull off some Elvis, but I really don't know all the words to his songs, mostly. It's terrible to say, but, you know, I just want to be yo, teddy bear. You know, uh, <laughs> whatever. So I'm just having fun, though. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> so enough of that. So anyways, guys, um, you know, so I was I was telling you the story. I like to stick to the story. Um but so in a high school, uh, the school is relatively small and the stage like is in our gymnasium that branches out into other parts of the school. So unfortunately, everyone in the school got to listen to me every day after lunch, rehearse all of these songs for like <laughs> a month or two. I don't know. Um, but by the time they actually got to hear me sing them, they were probably so sick and tired of it that they could puke. Um, but I really tried to liven it up and have fun and joke around and you know, play with the mic, you know, it's uh, fun to play around with the mic, kind of doing it now, if you know what I mean. So anyways, uh, one of my cousins, uh, my cousin's wife, Steph was on the show with us, uh, graduated high school with her, you know, and um, Tara, you know, some people that might be watching me and might be on Facebook might have actually found themselves in that particular concert. Um, and Stephanie, um, Tara, um, and Nicole Dawn. Uh, I don't know if she, I'm not friends with her on Facebook, but all of those girls can attest, okay, that when I busted out singing Only You, girls started screaming. Like, they started screaming. <laughs> so I know what that's like. Now, I know you're not going to scream. I know you're not screaming on here. Okay. But if you do, hey, <laughs> all the better. It means that I've succeeded because I sure as a shit don't want to come out here and sing and suck so bad that it's like kind of like it's more funny than you're like, I want you to be like, you know, this guy's not that bad. <coughs> <coughs> You know, for like a 46-year-old guy with one lung <clears throat> after years of smoking. And it's like late in the night here, guys. I was like going to bed. And then I got up because I was like restless. And you have to hear my Tiger Woods story. You absolutely have to hear it. And here's why. It's commemorative to... See, he just won the Masters, right? Which is, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a major, right? Now, the last major he won, the PGA Championship, I do believe in Oklahoma City, 
And guys, I'm speaking this without doing my research, so forgive me for that. <coughs> yeah, because he didn't win the FedEx Cup last year. He was real close, but he didn't. He was second. Um, but he won the tournament, <laughs> interestingly enough. PGA tournament. Wait. Since he won that, was that his last major? Dang it. I'm all effed up, y'all. Anyways, I'm going to tell you my story in a little bit. But first, let's sing a song. All right? Because, guys, my goal is to make you smile. Remember, that was the first song we sang. Now, actually, we sang Panic at the Disco, but we're almost not going to count that one. So I'm going to put my headphones on. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something tonight. And please, whoever's watching me through YouTube, <clears throat> let me know if what I'm doing is wrong. Because, like, I'm going to try to take this earbud and let y'all hear the music a little bit. Oh, but I think I kind of need to know <laughs> where the microphone is at. So <clears throat> we're going to try to sing this as best we can <clears throat> right now. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta look at the words a little bit. The world was on fire and no one could save me but you. This is for Michelle. Strange what desire will make foolish people do. I never dreamed that I'd meet somebody like you. And I never dreamed that I'd lose somebody like you. No, I don't want to fall in love. No, I fall in love <clears throat> with you. I don't know if you can hear that. You. Cool part of the song. I like this part. What a wicked game you play. To make me feel this way What a wicked thing to do To let me dream of you What a wicked thing to say Never felt this way What a wicked thing to do To let me dream of you when I Fall in love. No, I wanna fall in love with you. It's a good song to like, you know. I'm gonna end it there. So, first verse of that song really hits home for me. The second verse of that song makes me think of maybe someone's relationship or someone's turmoil with maybe their feelings for like God or something. Because sometimes people want to Blame God for things. Don't blame God. Blame Satan. Now we all can say, oh, well, but God, he's so big and he's so grand and he's so this and he's so that. Look, this is what I'm going to tell you. I've got God figured out. I do. I really do. I've spent 
countless hours studying the Bible, many hours translating it, Greek, Hebrew. I know the Bible. I carry the heart of the Bible in my heart. And I understand God. And throughout these YouTube videos, I'm going to attempt to tell a story. And the story is supernatural. It is supernatural, guys. If you don't have supernatural in your life, you're really missing out. And you need supernatural. And the only way to get it is through God. It's through the Spirit. It's through this world. It's through this energy in this world. And you got to learn how to tap into it. You got to learn how to listen for it. And in the process of this YouTube channel, I plan on telling a story. I plan on attempting to explain and tell a story of why this is happening to me and where I believe I'm going and where I believe this is all going and how all of you are a big part of it. And Michelle and I have talked about this for years. And it's always been like this, you know, stupid, crazy, like idea, like, oh, Tony's going to run for president, or I'm going to go do this, or I'm going to do that, or I'm going to do that. And it's crazy because Michelle has always, in some ways, resented me a little bit because she knows I have the energy. She knows I have the ability. She knows I have the mind, the passion, the love, the, the everything to go do this, like, I can really freaking do this shit, man. I think I can do it with money and people. This can be done. You know, like we can make a difference. We can change some shit. And mind you guys, things aren't that bad, but we got to work on the healthcare system. It's going to take three more presidents just to play around with that, just to get it to where I could clean it up because it's a system. It's an ugly system. We need to let capitalism settle a little bit and we need to let socialism sit on the tongues of people who don't understand it. Now we give it a name socialism and at its face value, I'm sure it's a shit, not a socialist. Not a communist, not a Republican, not a Democrat. I think I might be a repocrat. I'm going to term it. I'm a repocrat. I'm your perfect in between guy. I really am. I think I really am. Now, we did some singing, told a story about, you know, girls screaming. That was pretty cool, by the way. <laughs> Gotta get a drink, one sec. Drink too much water. Shall we plug the Coke? Hell yeah. Coca-Cola. Love it. Who doesn't like a good Coke every now and then? It's got to be cold, though. For some reason, mouth went super dry tonight, so I'm sorry if my <laughs> tongue is going ape shit. Um, <laughs> apologize for that. But anyways, so here's the Tiger Woods story. And we have demonstrations. Check this out. So, in this jar, right? Where is she? There. Inside of that jar, that. Can I get it? 
Okay, so we got this. Oh, oh, oh my God. I don't even want to touch this, guys. Honestly. So, I'm right, very careful here. Got a shadow on here. Guys, this is the autograph of the real Tiger Woods on a $20 bill. Now, anybody tell me what president that is? Anybody? His name's right at the bottom. Anybody know their history? See, I'm an Indian. I know what Andrew Jackson did to the Indians. I also know what he did to the black folks. Now I, please bear with me while I carefully place this back in the bottle. Cause I'm a genie in the bottle, baby. <laughs> Why did I do that? Come, come, come on, Oh, and y'all, that's the pen that he signed it with. Yo, I gotta get some makeup. My shit's been looking like rough around here. You know? Now I see why you gotta do the makeup in here. But, anyways, stop chewing on my lip, right? Tiger Woods. Now, here's the thing. I'm gonna look this up for you real quick. Give me one second. Tiger Woods wins Oklahoma. Come on, tell me, 2007 PGA Championship. Played August 9th and 12th at Southern Hills Country Club in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Defending champion Tiger Woods won his fourth PGA Championship. And 13th, number 13th, major title. Two strokes up ahead of Woody Austin. Now, that was August 9th and 12th. Okay. They were talking on the radio, kind of, there was a little bit of hype about where Tiger Woods was at after that. All right. So I'm going to tell you where he was at. Nobody knew where he was at. Media is looking for him. Kind of like when Obama disappeared, right? So everybody's looking for him. Now, me and my apprentice are working at a place. Um, it's. Oh, God, I think it was called Antonio's Restaurant, and it was on Sand Lake Road um, in Orlando, of course. <clears throat> and him and I are working up on this second story, and you know, I'm doing electrical work as an electrician, making my 18 bucks an hour or what have you. And I'm sitting there, I'm like down on my knees, you know, putting some an outlet in the wall, running some wire to this outlet. And to my right and to my left, but to my right, no, not to my left, to my right is this long balcony. And if you're ever on Sand Lake Road, this is a kind of a famous place. A lot of, it's kind of a cool place. A lot of people go there. There's a, you know, moonfish, there's you know, some nice eating places over there. And um, anyways, I look down this balcony, it's way down there. And I look and I'm like, that guy looks like Tiger Woods. I tell my helper, and he's like, the hell is Tiger Woods, you know? Like, I mean, he knew who Tiger Woods was, but he was like, whatever, you know? So about halfway to me, I look, and I'm like, bro, that's fucking Tiger Woods, dude. And I'm looking at and I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's Tiger Woods. Oh, my God. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. What am I going to do? He walks in the door. I'm looking at him. Oh my God. 
it's freaking Tiger Woods. I'm like, that's freaking Tiger Woods. Oh my God. That's Tiger Woods. And guess what? He's going in this haircut place. <laughs> so he goes in this haircut place, right? And I go over and I'm like, I go in the door and I walk up to the receptionist lady and the lady's just like, um, sir, I'm sorry, but can you just let Mr. Woods get his haircut? <laughs> and I'm like, sure. So because I don't want to take the chance of missing him, I literally don't want to leave and go downstairs and go to my van and get something for him to sign on. So I'm like, what do I have in my wallet? So I reach for my wallet. I always carry a pen on my shirt right there so I can sign crap. So I reach my wallet. I pull out the 20. I get my pen ready. And bro, I'm waiting. And I'm post up. And I'm like, don't be nervous. Be cool. Don't freak out. Don't be like a little freaking bitch. Just like, be cool. Be cool. He's Tiger Woods. Oh my freaking God, it's Tiger freaking ass Woods. Holy shit. So I'm like, suck it up, baby. <laughs> he comes out. I go, hey, Tiger. Tiger, can I get your autograph? He looks at me like, kind of gives me this look. First, he doesn't look at me. He's like looking down, kind of looking away like, I said, Tiger. I said, hell of a win, bro. You're 13th. Amazing. So freaking, dude, you got to be. And he looked, and I'm like, can I please get your autograph? Please. I'm begging him at this point. He looks at me. He kind of gives a little tiger grin. And he, 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 once he does that, I kind of approach him. I didn't stick my hand out to shake his hand because he's a golfer. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to be the guy that breaks Tiger Woods' hand, you know, because he's probably not going to shake my hand because, you know, when you're a golfer, you got, you know, you might want to be on me. I'm some freako stalker guy was to like just squeeze the shit out of your hand and break it, right? I mean, if I was Tiger, I wouldn't shake your hand either. So I just hand the 20 with the pin hooked to the 20. Like it was rolled up like that, right? I hand it to him. He pulls it out. He's like, you golf? I said, yes, sir. But nothing like you. You're the best ever. <laughs> and I, and he looks at me and he goes, well, thank you. And he signs it, hands it back to me. He goes, next time, make it a 50. <laughs> and he smiles at me. He grins at me, smiles at me, and walks out the door. And I literally sat there and watched Tiger Woods walk down that balcony and out of my life. Until Sunday, until last year. See, some of y'all don't know that I did a radio show on ESPN called Fairways and Greens. It was a golf show because I'm an avid golfer. I'm an amateur golfer. I play on the Golf Channel Am Tour. Um, I've got stats on there, all that crap. I've got a single-digit handicap, which isn't great. Tommy, one of our cousins, came down, and that guy is freaking really good. And if I could, I think he's good enough to be pro, but he doesn't seem to want to chase that, I guess. I don't know. Then again, he may not be long enough. He may not be able to hit his drives long enough. But I think if we flatted it down a little bit, see, that's the other thing. Like, I could teach people how to play golf. I'm like, really... I understand the geometry and the dynamics of golf. Let's just say that. And have a cat visit to her outside if you can hear. So that's my Tiger Woods story, guys. And um, I'm happy to share it with you. Mama Cat's like, yo, I want to come in because I let her in. But hey, guys, just a little update on Michelle. So the other night, things were really, really, really freaking bad. And... Um, that's when we made that last video. But for some reason, somehow, some way, some amazing way, uh, Michelle got up the next morning. She was feeling great. She was feeling really good. And um, uh, things, 
she looks a lot better. Unfortunately, I hate to say it, but I, I, I just, oh God, you know, you want so badly to believe that everything is going to be okay and that she's going to be okay and that cancer is going to go away and all that. But guys, I don't, I just don't think that that's how it's going to go. It's been so hard and so sad in a way to see this. It's really not in a way. It's been freaking horrible, horrible. I cried so hard yesterday morning that I think my eyes still hurt. Do they look like they hurt? <laughs> I cry at the drop of a friggin' hat now or dime, whatever you call it. I really do. I have really, really become somewhat sensitive, much more sensitive than I was. So listen, guys, um, oh, another little update. We did our first DIY video today. It was on uh, how to clean a dryer vent pipe. Our dryer was giving us a problem. And I told Brandon, I said, you know what, guys, part of our my YouTube channel is going to be DIY stuff. We're about to completely remodel this home here uh, that we own here in Florida. Uh, we're getting ready to kind of stage it and get it ready for future um, Airbnb rentals. And I mean, this house could make $100,000 a year in rental if you just, you know, fixed it up and Airbnb it because it can be turned into three large units. You could have essentially like, I don't know, two 800 square foot um, efficiency. Well, one, one bedroom apartment, one efficiency apartment, which would be the upstairs loft. And then you would have the downstairs, which we're getting ready to completely remodel, um, which the garage can act as a bedroom. And then you have, which it's not a garage anymore. It's an office. Um, but so on and so forth. The point is guys, um, on this YouTube channel, we're going to talk about how to make money. Um, I do believe that you guys are going to see, get to see the opportunity, have the opportunity to get to watch me. Um, see, the one thing about it is this with Michelle in my life right now, I was, I had built and built and built my life up to this moment to spend the rest of my quiet life alone, quietly with my wife. That was our plan. And now in the back of my mind, I've always felt like God has given me some, 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 something. Okay. I do have visions and dreams and I don't want to share those with you guys now just yet because I just don't think it's the proper time. And I don't want you guys to think I'm off the deep end. Okay. Um, because I have to put the scriptures in front of you and show you what visions and dreams are, and you know, are and what they look like and and how they work. So, the plan is is that um, you know, and the, the, to finish what I was saying, you know, Michelle and I, that was our plan, guys. It was our plan. And if you don't think Michelle and I are ripping our hearts out right now because we can't do this. I don't know what to say. Like, of course we are. <laughs> like, this is all I ever wanted was to be with her and to just quietly go off into the world and die, I guess, you know, like just go off into the world. But listen, I'm going to say that I, I just, of course I have to say because That's a weird noise. Because I have to believe in God. Okay. I have to believe that God is guiding this um, and kind of taking me down a road that maybe he wants me to go. I don't know. All I know, guys, is I have an, an amazing, immense ability to really accomplish a lot of stuff. To really get some things done. And I plan on taking all of this focus, all of this energy and passion and focusing it into good. 
into doing good for this world. That's what I plan on doing. So I'm going to teach people how to make money. And I'm going to show you what it looks like to share that money. And I'm going to teach you what the law of reciprocity looks like, which in my Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Now, Michelle and I have given in our lives. We have given. And it has been returned back to us now in many ways. When you own a business, you give. You give in business. You must give in business. If you don't, the more you give, the more you make, just so you know. Um, so people who are uh, making $60 million a year are also probably giving quite, quite, quite a bit of money <laughs> um, also. So anyways, my point is this, Michelle and I have talked, Michelle and I have talked about what my plans are and she's all about it. She wants to be with me. She wishes we could be together. She wants it more than anything. But she also knows the reality. And with that reality, she's given me her grace to do this. Now listen, the idea is that we're gonna we're really gonna try to run for president. Like that's that's like the mark, right? That's like the mark. And I bet every president that's president at some point in time, way back when, when they were younger, probably said, I'm going to run for president. And that's what I'm saying right now. I don't know how the freaking hell I'm going to do it, but it's all I'm going to have to do in my life. And what I'm going to do is go around the country, talking to people, meeting people, telling them who I am, introducing myself, interviewing people, giving to people, all of that kind of stuff, singing to people. And I'm going to be like a little Teddy Roosevelt for a little while. You know, we had two presidents in the past who were single as presidents. Neither one of them were married prior to being a president. One of them got married in their second term. I'll let you look up who those presidents were. Come on, if you're not watching my channel and you're not intrigued by that, then you shouldn't be here because this is going to be a lot of history. And science, and Christianity, spirituality, success, finance. It's going to be a lot, guys. Nature, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be something. I've shared my life with Michelle and I will continue to do so. And I am continuing to do so. But when she's gone, I'm yours. I'm, I'm yours world. Let's go till next time. Love you guys.